shut off pretty early that time. Usually it'll go a little faster than that, but I think you get the point. It just starts to spin and turns off. I emailed their tech support a little bit and called them and the fan's out of warranty and I've troubleshooted the potentiometer, which is really all that switch is. It's a zero to 100 kilo ohm potentiometer and I jumpered around it to put the fan on full speed and it spun up and turned back off. So I don't think it's the potentiometer. What I was told by their support guys is that there's a circuit in the motor that's basically overload protection that'll shut it down and it sounds like that's the problem. Um, a couple times when it did it and it spun, spun back down, I heard some like squeaking, like a bearing maybe. So my hope is I can take this motor out, take it apart, find a bearing in there and replace it and it'll work. So that's what I'm gonna try. That uh, is not good. Don't think we fixed it. So there's some issue going on in the controls part, back part of that motor, it seems like. 
Okay, I did a lot of research about motors. The motor in the Big S fan is the ECM motor, which stands for electronically commutated motor. It's basically a brushless DC motor with three phases and a controller. Uh, the controller portion of the motor converts AC current from the wall to DC current, and then a microprocessor and circuitry pulses the DC current uh, to the motor phases. It can change the frequency and duration of the pulse to control the motor speed, and that's what makes this so much more efficient at varying speeds than a regular um, permanent split capacitor or PSC motor, which is an AC induction motor. In these, the speed is primarily driven by the frequency of the AC current and the number of poles in the motor. Um, I could dive really deep into the comparison between the two, but maybe I'll do that in a different video. Um, for now, the important part is that the ECM motor has a controller and the PSC motor doesn't. So, um, in the case of the big ass fan motor, they have a proprietary controller and the controller went bad. So, I was going to try and troubleshoot and repair the controller, but it's in potted. It is potted in some sort of rubber stuff that I was never going to get off, although you can see that I, I did try. Um, and this is not a part you can get from an HVAC distributor. I even went to a motor shop and they looked into it and could not find anything that would work. So I called Big S Fans and they quoted me a replacement part for $1,150. I mean, I'm not going to pay that much probably. <laughs> and then this was the whole motor assembly, so the motor and the controller, um, because they will not sell just the controller. And it only comes with a 90 day parts warranty. So that just wasn't going to work for me. Lawrence, what would you do if you had a million dollars? I'll tell you what I'd do, man. Buy a big ass fan motor. <laughs> That's it? You, you had a million dollars, you, you'd buy a big ass fan motor? Damn straight. I always wanted to do that, man. And I think if I were a millionaire, I could hook that up, too. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is replace the ECM motor with a PSC motor. And no controllers needed, just a capacitor and a switch. And I got this motor on eBay with the capacitor for uh, $65. So hopefully it works. And I got two switches on Amazon for eight bucks. So um, I think I can fix this fan for under $80 instead of $1,150. Um, a little bit about this motor. It's a half horsepower four speed motor. It's a 48 frame size with an extended shaft. So I might have to cut the shaft down an inch, but we'll see. Um, the high speed is 1,075 RPM. The original motor has an advertised half horsepower and 1,300 uh, RPM max speed, but I never ran the fan wide open anyway, so I'm not concerned about the difference in top speed. What I'm a bit concerned about is if I picked the right power rating or if I should have sized it up or down relative to the ECM um, rating. And I'm not sure how much difference we'll see between the speed settings, but uh, there's only one way to find out. And then lastly, the switch I got is a five position switch, so I can have an off position and then four speed positions. It's only rated at eight amps, um, and the motor says it's a 6.1 full load amps. So as long as it's not overloaded and the startup current spike is manageable, the switch should work. I got it though because it, it looked like the easiest to install in the factory spot, which will look um, really good and have a clean installation. Uh, my first priority is to make the fan work reliably for a reasonable price, and then the kind of second priority is to is to make it look good, and so the average person won't be able to tell um, there's been a motor swap. So that's the plan, and I'm going to go do it, and we'll see if it works.
So I'm really, I'm really pleased with that. Um, the motor fit, um, like I mentioned earlier, the shaft is an inch longer, but the way the big ass fan blades attach the shaft, I just slid them back an inch further from the end of the shaft um, to get them in the same position. I'm real happy with how the, the switch turned out. Um, I think that looks really good. The cord, the way the conduits run on the inside, the wiring to the capacitor, I could have cleaned up a little bit and maybe done a little better, but um, it looks all right. I don't think anybody really notices. I like where the capacitor's mounted. Uh, the speeds are all, there's not a whole lot of differentiation. That was one, one main thing um, that the original big S fan motor did well is it had a pretty wide range of, of speed adjustability. I don't have anything I can measure the speed with right now, but um, the four speeds are distinct and are different, but there's not a big range between the speeds. Um, I actually like it on the low speed setting. It moves a lot of air, but it's not real quiet or not real loud. So um, I'm happy with it. If you made it this far, I just want to point out a couple of things I thought were ironic from their website. They advertise this model as the world's toughest, most durable directional fan. It is the tough as nails directional fan that takes abuse and stays in use. The world's most durable fan. Superior construction. We designed Yellow Jacket with one goal in mind, to be the toughest directional fan ever made. Well, the structure of the fan might be strong, but I'm unsatisfied with the durability of the motor, uh, to say the least. I mean, this is a $3,000 fan. So I think it's fair to expect it to last a really long time. 